The Wemo Stage, a smart scene controller that now supports thread. That makes this the first and only thread capable HomeKit button at the time of recording. Today I'm going to pair this with other HomeKit and thread accessories to see if it really makes a difference. Let's go! Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane. If you're new here and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday right here. Physical controllers like the Wemo Stage are almost a necessity for your smart home in my opinion, especially if you live with other people. You know, if you've ever had your spouse cursing at Siri trying to remember what the phrase is just to turn on the lights, then you probably know what I'm talking about. So that's why I'm a huge advocate of having some sort of physical way to control your smart home accessories in addition to voice control and your automations. The Wemo Stage Scene Controller will cost you about $50 US. It works exclusively with Apple HomeKit and gives you the ability to create and manage up to six scenes or accessories in your smart home. Did I mention Thread? As of January 2022, the Wemo Stage now supports Thread, Wemo, or its parent company Belkin, was actually one of the many companies that recently announced their commitment to supporting Matter moving forward. And Thread is one of the main protocols that Matter is built on top of. If you want a more in-depth explanation of Thread and Matter and how each work, then definitely check out this video here from last week that kind of explains everything in more detail. To connect the Wemo stage to HomeKit over Thread, you will need a Thread border router, something like a HomePod mini or the newest Apple TV 4K. If you don't have a Thread border router present, then this will connect over Bluetooth, which I wouldn't recommend. I've had this thing since like early 2021 and I should mention full disclosure too, Belkin did send me this way back then uh, free of charge so that I could test it out and share it with you here on the channel but uh, I honestly really just didn't want to use it because using it with Bluetooth sucks to be honest. It's slow and unreliable but after that recent firmware update allowing it to connect over thread it's much better and now we got something to talk about. And as always, affiliate links down in the description below in case you decide you want to pick up one for yourself. That does always help the channel and is much appreciated. So out of the box, we have the scene controller, wall plate, and setup guide. It includes a CR2032 battery. You can see here it includes holes to mount in a standard wall switch box. This is one of my favorite things about this product, but it does also include 3M tape on the back where you can mount it to a wall uh, without drilling any holes, attach the cover plate, and this thing instantly looks like any typical light switch. It's pretty awesome. There's a little notch that shows you where to remove the back to put the battery in. I use a little knife, you have your HomeKit code right here as well as a restore button. Pair it to HomeKit just like any other device. Choose add a new device and then scan the HomeKit code. Choose which room it goes in, change the name if you want to. Now it's available in HomeKit and you can see we have our three programmable buttons. Each button can be configured with a single press, a double press, or a long press. It's worth noting that this thing does work exclusively with HomeKit and within the Home app, it does not work or show up in the Wemo app. And something else that's really cool that I didn't realize right away is that they also have NFC built into the device. So you can actually just tap the back of the controller with your phone to begin the pairing process, which is pretty cool. Wemo also included that NFC feature in their new video doorbell, which I'll also be reviewing here soon on the channel. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on that once it's published because that's gonna be a good one. The device does have a little status light that I do like a lot. It might be kind of hard to see here on camera. A green light means that a scene has been triggered, a blinking yellow light means that an error has occurred, and a solid yellow means that it has a low battery. Again, one thing I love here is the mounting options. You can mount it by itself and it looks great or include it you know, in or next to an existing wall switch box and they look great. I ended up mounting this one inside of a two gang box. On one side I had an Ikara smart switch and the other switch is actually, uh, it's wired for a ceiling fan here in the studio that I don't actually have, there's no ceiling fan. So I just capped off the wires for that switch since I'm not using it and I put this Wemo stage right there in place of that switch that I wasn't using and it looks great. 
I love being able to walk into the room and use this to move the, you know, my home kit shades up and down. And it's perfect for my studio. I can easily remove the controller and use it, you know, around my studio. So I'll end up setting up some of these other buttons here to control, you know, my camera lights and my background lights and all that good stuff. And I can move this little controller around, you know, around the studio with me. And then when I'm done, just pop it right there to the wall plate. And since it's magnetic, you can actually stick this thing to anything metal, which is also really awesome. You know, on a fridge, under your desk, to your monitor or microphone arm. Here, let me show you the hat real quick. I can just, pretty cool, right? I can even stick this to my windowsill. So that's really cool. I love that it's magnetic. So now for the important part, the performance. Again, make sure you can use this thing with thread, if not, it might not be worth it, you know, if you have to rely on that Bluetooth connection, it's gonna be a lot more slow and probably not as reliable with Bluetooth. Uh, and if you need to check to make sure it is connected via thread, you can always use something like the free Eve app to check, you know, that thread connection there for the Wemo stage. If you look in the thread network of the Eve app, I can see clearly that this one here is in fact connected via thread. The real test that I really couldn't wait to try is using this, a thread enabled HomeKit button to control other thread enabled HomeKit products. Um, that to me should be the ideal thread test, right? A thread product to control other thread products within HomeKit. I had a few products to try with the stage. I got the new Eve motion blinds that support thread as well as a few nano leaf lights all connected to HomeKit via thread. So I first set up the Wemo stage to control the Eve motion blinds and I gotta say I was a little bit disappointed. There was still a clear delay most of the time when using the buttons. I then set up the stage to control some nano leaf lights, both a light bulb and a light strip and wow it was so fast i even opened up the home app to see the responsiveness and it's pretty incredible you can actually see the light turning on and off before the little tile in the home app even responded with that little bounce animation it was very fast for both the thread light strip and the light bulb then I tried it with a few other non-thread home kit products around the house, like these little color light panels which connect over Wi-Fi, and those were also extremely fast. Actually about as fast as controlling the nano leaf lights, surprisingly. So my conclusion regarding the delay with the shades is that the shades just must be the you know the root of the delay for whatever reason, I'm not sure what. Um, not a huge issue, like I said, I do still plan to use this Wemo stage here in the studio to control my Eve shades. That second or two delay is not the end of the world for me, but again, I think that it has more to do with the shades than the Wemo stage because the stage is lightning fast when using it to control you know, other home kit lights and accessories. I'm a huge fan of this thing, a little pricey at $50, but considering no extra hub is needed, I'd say it's a good deal. I will probably be getting some more of these. The various mounting options, the ability to include it with other standard or smart switches is huge. Getting multiple button press actions for each button, no additional proprietary hub required, and of course, that support for thread. The only HomeKit button that connects over thread currently, to me, this thing checks all the boxes. And it also looks like Wemo, as I kind of mentioned earlier, is moving in a great direction. They've also announced other HomeKit products coming in the future that will support thread and matter, all of which I'm pretty excited about. If that also excites you, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon for new HomeKit videos every Sunday. Smash the like button if you got something out of this video. And also go ahead and check out some of these other HomeKit videos I got right here. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.